This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 7th day of April in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here is what we're tracking tonight. The total number of confirmed cases of the coronavirus in Guyana continues to climb. The public health minister revealed this afternoon that the number has climbed to 33, representing an increase by two over the past 24 hours. The number of confirmed cases is now 33 with our deaths increasing to five. The total number of persons tested thus far is 132, with 33 positives, inclusive of five deaths and 99 negatives. There are now four persons in the coronavirus intensive care unit with one of those persons in a critical condition. The country recorded its fifth death as a result of the virus last evening when drag racer Derek Jai Singh passed away at the Georgetown Hospital. Jai Singh, who according to relatives had an underlying medical condition, had been admitted to the hospital after spending a number of days at home feeling unwell. He was transferred to the COVID-19 ICU as his condition worsened a few days ago. Minister Lawrence again appealed to citizens this afternoon afternoon to follow the guidelines being provided by the Public Health Ministry as the number of cases in Guyana continues to climb. As you can see, the numbers of confirmed cases as well as deaths are rising. Once again, we wish to reiterate that we can stop the transmission and reduce the deaths if you follow the guidelines that we continue to provide daily. I wish also to repeat that you will not escape the coronavirus disease if you continue to operate as if you don't care. COVID-19 is real friends and it's a killer. So help us to help you stay alive. If you don't adhere, it is very likely that you will contract this disease and you may probably die. And she reminded that the curfew remains in effect and will not change until the 4th of May, which will be based on the response of citizens. Fellow Guyanese, we in the health sector beg of you to cooperate with us and just stay home. I repeat, just stay home. If you must go out during the day, please ensure that your nose and mouth are covered. This is for your safety and protection. Remember, hand washing, cough and sneeze etiquette, good respiratory hygiene and social and physical distancing continue to be the necessary practices that can prevent the COVID-19 disease. If you have signs and symptoms suggestive of this disease, you should seek medical care early by calling or using the app, which will now be available to you. Meanwhile, some good news. Nine persons who had earlier tested positive for the coronavirus and were hospitalized have now tested negative and are fully recovered. They are being discharged from the hospital. More news coming up in a moment. Parents and guardians, you are encouraged to tune in to the Guyana Learning Channel, Cable 29 or Channel 42 for daily educational and interactive learning sessions. The nursery program airs from 6 hours to 9 hours. Primary programs from 9 hours to 12 noon. We also air informative documentaries from 12 noon to 13 hours. And our secondary level programs are aired from 13 hours to 15 hours. Please continue to listen to our radio broadcasts. The interactive radio instruction for grades 1 to 3 daily on Voice of Guyana from 9 hours 30 to 10 hours for grade 1 pupils, from 10 hours 30 to 11 hours for grade 2s, and 13 hours to 13 hours 30 for grade 3 pupils. Please remember to tune in to benefit from these educational opportunities. A message from the Ministry of Education. GBTI is your Guyanese bank, a bank that understands every customer's unique needs, opportunities, challenges, and financial concerns. At GBTI, we see you for you. Whether you're buying a new home or car, 
planning your next vacation or retirement, saving for your child's future, or whether you're ready to take that bold step of investing in your dream business idea, we are with you every step of the way. We hear your stories and watch you focus on your dreams as we share your aspirations. We are more than just banking. We are a family. We are part of your community. Our commitment extends way beyond the walls of our branches and is demonstrated every day in the opportunities we provide to our individual and business customers. The support, time, and commitment we give back to communities across Guyana to help improve the lives of our Guyanese families. Because we see Guyana through your eyes. Guyot Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyot's Super 95 Gasoline. Tired of long lines? Register with MyGTT at mygtt.co.gy. That's mygtt.co.gy to view and pay your bills from anywhere. Enter to win an Amazon gift card worth 25 US dollars or a bounty voucher worth 5,000 Guyana dollars when you sign up today. GTT, do more. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. You can prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. If you have the following symptoms, coughing, fever, or difficulty breathing, please stay home. If you don't have these symptoms, then practice social distancing. Avoid crowds. When in a group, keep a distance of at least 3 feet between yourself and other persons. Please wash your hands with soap regularly or use hand sanitizers. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Welcome back. A 60-year-old gold miner who was originally from Turkine on the east coast of the Marara is hospitalized in Region 8 tonight after exhibiting symptoms of the coronavirus. He has been isolated. According to information from the police commander in the area, at around 11.40 last night, the miner turned up at the Madia Public Hospital and reported feeling unwell. He was seen and examined by the doctor on duty who admitted him as a suspected case for the coronavirus. The doctor made that decision because the man was coughing continuously and also had difficulty breathing. The health authorities in Georgetown were contacted and were expected to have a medical team visit them to have a sample taken to be tested in Georgetown for possible coronavirus. The miner operates a mining site at North Fork Bagdam in the Kanawaru community in Region 8. Testing for the coronavirus in Guyana is only being done by the National Reference Laboratory at the Georgetown Hospital. There are reports tonight that over 25 other persons have been quarantined in Region 8 over concerns that they might have been exposed to the virus in the region. Well, the private sector commission, which serves as a local observer group for the 2020 elections, wants the Ghana Elections Commission to only recount the votes for Region 4 and not the other nine regions in its agreed recount process. On Friday, the Ghana Elections Commission decided to recount all of the votes cast in the elections in all of the regions, beginning with Region 1 and continuing to Region 10. But in a surprising statement last evening, the Private Sector Commission said it would be an entire waste of time to count all of the regions, since it found absolutely no evidence to suggest that a declaration of the election results was not credible and in compliance with the electoral laws in all the districts except District 4. The Private Sector Commission which also wants the recount to be broadcast on national TV, claims that a countrywide recount with imposed travel restrictions taking place because of the coronavirus would be an almost insurmountable exercise, which they believe would be entirely frivolous and unnecessary. But it was the same private sector commission that welcomed the initiative for CARICOM to overlook the recount process, and that initiative always made provisions for a recount of votes cast in all of the regions. And just two days ago, the chairman of the Private Sector Commission, Captain Jerry Gavaya, declared that there should be a recount of all votes cast in the elections from every ballot box. 
While the Guyana government has approved a number of tax relief efforts that will be passed on to citizens as the country continues to find the effects of the coronavirus. The GRE announced this afternoon that the value-added tax has been removed from water and electricity for the months of April, May and June. Additionally, VAT is also being removed from domestic air travel for the next three months. And the GRE has also announced that a deadline for the filing of tax returns has been extended to the end of June. The Revenue Collection Agency reminded, however, that the estimate remaining taxes using management financial statements for the year of income 2019, year of assessment 2020, must be paid by the 30th of April. The authority said it will expedite the processing of VAT refunds for businesses and PAYE refunds for employees. GRA said despite having employees working from home, the authority continues to provide essential services to the taxpaying public and at the same time collect vital revenue necessary for the provision of services. It is also fast-tracking the provision of its services electronically, including the submission of documents and payments. The GRA said it is also continuing to provide the essential services needed to clear items both by air and sea, and also to expedite exports. The measures announced today are in addition to those announced just over a week ago to ease the cost citizens are paying for essential items needed to fight off the coronavirus. Taxes have been waived for the import of medical supplies and lab testing equipment and kits, as well as those products needed for sanitization as well as vitamins. Turning now to business and industry, while announcing that it will be reducing its capital investments globally by 15% this year as part of plans to reduce costs and increase efficiency, the ExxonMobil company has announced that its operations in Guyana will remain unaffected. On the international market, the global COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in low prices from oversupply and demand weakness for the oil companies. However, for Guyana, the Exxon chairman and CEO Darren Woods said today that the Developing the numerous world-class deepwater discoveries offshore Guyana remains an integral part of its long-term growth plans. He said the current operations on board the Lisa Destiny production vessel are unaffected, and startup of the second phase of field development remains on target for 2022, with the Lisa Unity production vessel currently under construction. The CEO said as the company awaits for government approval to proceed with a third production vessel for the Payara development, some 2020 activities are now being being deferred, creating a potential delay in production startup of 6 to 12 months. Exxon started all production in Guyana back in December. The company has been leading the way with all discoveries in this country since 2015. Well, as part of its ongoing efforts to safeguard both staff and customers amid the growing coronavirus concerns in this country, Republic Bank today announced that it will be reducing its banking days beginning next Tuesday. In a statement this afternoon, Republic Bank said that with effect from Tuesday the 14th of April and continuing until the 30th of April, its branches will be open to the public on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Fridays only. On those days, the banking hours will be from 8 o'clock in the morning until 12 noon. During opening days, in branch services, will be offered, including deposits and withdrawals and limited loan services. Customers are being encouraged to utilize the bank's ATM system and online services to transact business on the days that the bank will be closed to the public. Republic Bank is also encouraging its customers and all citizens to adhere to the guidelines being provided by the authorities to guard against the coronavirus. Last week, Republic Bank announced that it will be donating $31.5 million to Guyana to assist in the fight against the coronavirus. Across the region is coming up next. Wondering how you can access free learning materials for your children? Parents and guardians, please visit the Ministry of Education's website at www.education.gov.gy to access textbooks, past papers, and practice tests to keep your child engaged in continuous learning. When you have accessed the site, go to the Students tab, wait for a second, and choose the appropriate option. You now have access to the resources you need. You are encouraged to take advantage of this opportunity as we strive to provide the best education for the nation children a message from the Ministry of Education They've made a positive impact on the heavy-duty transportation industry in Guyana since they've arrived. Guyanese are amazed at their power, durability, efficiency, and superior handling capabilities. These are brand new trucks, manufactured in partnership with German, Italian, and French companies. They have a powerful reputation for operating under very adverse Guyanese conditions and come with full after-sales service and spare parts. They're the most sought-after trucks today, with over 500 units in Guyana, and they're available in over 100 countries, including South America and the Caribbean. 
Caribbean. Be smart. Buy brand new ST Howard trucks today. Call 608-4998 and arrange for an inspection at ST Truck and Incorporated. Block B, Public Road Covenant, East Bank, Demerara. We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. Falls, a trademark of China's Zhanghao Incorporated, located at Land of Cane in East Bank, Demerara, was incorporated in April of 2013, with over 10 billion Ghana dollars invested in a state-of-the-art 100,000 barrel fuel storage facility, a modern service station, an office complex, and a modern wharf that can berth international vessels. Having no association with any other fuel company, Falls imports its own fuel, which meets quality specifications, has all the legal permits, and is in compliance with international requirements. Its bulk facility can load eight trucks simultaneously at a rate of 1,000 liters per minute, while the service station can service 12 cars at a time using computerized fuel pumps which can facilitate the use of ATM cards. Through its professional team of mostly Guyanese, Falls holds sales and retails fuels to the public, including farmers and miners, and will continue to positively contribute to Guyana by providing quality products, service, and attractive prices. Try Falls today for all your fuel needs. The following is an important message from the Ministry of Public Health. Getting your workplace ready for COVID-19. Surfaces such as desks, tables, and telephones with keyboards must be wiped with disinfectant regularly, or at least every few hours. Use containers of hand sanitizers and place them in prominent places around the workplace. Provide access to places where staff can wash their hands with soap and water and promote regular hand washing at the workplace. The Ministry of Public Health has a hotline to provide information on the coronavirus. Members of the public can call 227-4986 or 624-3067. Across the region right now, the government of Grenada has extended a 24-hour mandatory curfew to the 20th of April. The curfew should have ended on Monday. Under the new regulations for a limited state of emergency, residents must be confined to their homes for 14 days. The COVID response coordinator in Grenada, Dr. George Mitchell, said the period is to ensure that the country does all that it can to save lives, and he said they have entered a crucial phase in terms of the spread of the COVID-19 in the country. He said he believes by taking the measure, it will give them a really good opportunity to see where they are in terms of ensuring and minimizing community spread of COVID-19 in Grenada. In neighboring Brazil, a report published by the country's Army Strategic Studies Center last week contradicts President Jair Bolsonaro by calling for widespread isolation to fight COVID-19 in Brazil, potentially ratcheting up an already heated debate with the government. The study calls for reinforcing social distancing measures to slow the acceleration of confirmed cases that have doubled in the last six days to over 12,000 in Brazil. There have been 553 related deaths. The statement coming from the army defies statements by the president in Brazil, who has sought to minimize the risk of the respiratory disease, calling for states to end lockdowns and let Brazilians get back to work. And finally tonight, international news. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is breathing without any assistance and continues to be monitored in critical care. That's according to the Foreign Minister in the UK, Dominic Raab. Raab, who's deputising for Johnson, said the British leader had remained stable overnight and was receiving standard oxygen treatment. The British Prime Minister, who tested positive for the coronavirus about two weeks ago, was admitted to a hospital in London two nights ago after developing more symptoms for the disease. He has been in the intensive care unit since then. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. Gordon Mosley reporting. <laughs>